Ladies and gentlemen, that smiling face you see there is uh, my, uh, it's my uh, ex-wife. It's Ronnie Bennett. Hello, Ronnie. Hello, Alex. Yes. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know. Have you celebrated? No, I'm going out to dinner right after we're through with this. My little birthday dinner. You know. A what dinner? A birthday dinner. Birthday dinner. Yeah. What is it? At, at a restaurant. Are you going somewhere special? Yeah, we're going to Lydia Bastianich's place, and she's uh, she has her. We love her restaurants. Okay, they're just okay. very good. Anyway. All so, right. And I'm wearing my nine, made 1939 uh, uh, t-shirt uh, 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 cap here. I'm out of it today. So. Which birthday is this? You don't know. This is the big one. Eight. eight, zero. eight oh, zero. right. Eight zero. Sorry, I'm a little slow this afternoon. 1939. <laughs> you know, it's been a busy morning. I'm a little slow. Oh, okay. All right. What have you been doing that's been keeping you oh, so busy? Oh, just a bunch of stuff around the house, a bunch of blog stuff, and a bunch of... I had to go down to OHSU because I have a port in my chest where they... <laughs> put liquids in me or take out blood and it has to be flushed every week every month if I'm not using it which I'm not these days much yeah. um, otherwise terrible things happen I guess so you know it was an hour round trip for a five minute procedure <laughs> you, you know what it, 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 I, it, it's suddenly hitting me because I'm talking to you and I'm going through something myself that it, it's just all these little things that they do to you to keep you up to date. I mean, they have, you're talking about having a port. It's sort of like a computer, isn't it? Well, They've well, got to update us every once well, in a while. Well, I was thinking, <laughs> you've got a port. What is it, a USB connector? Or is it Ethernet? You know? <laughs> yeah, they do. They just update me once in a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly, but if it's from Microsoft, they if it's well, if it's Apple, they update it every other day. That's the problem. You know. Do you know that you and I, mm -hmm. this, is, this is your birthday, and we'll talk about such things. Yeah. Is that as desperately old as we are nowadays? You're now eighty. I'm still seventy-eight. Um, we've known each other for about sixty of those years. You know, you're right. You're right. Yeah, I met you when I was about 18, 19. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You're probably my, I'm trying to think about it. I think you're my oldest living friend. <laughs> really, I'm serious. I I had a friend, Roy Trumbull. Do you remember Roy Trumbull yeah, at all? Yeah, I do. And, and Roy died a couple of years ago. And he was like my, my high school friend, you know. Who was the guy who lived in Boston who came to see us in New York once? Oh, God. Who was that? Uh, I don't remember. You got to refresh my... a friend of yours who lived in Boston, though, but I think you'd known him from school in California. Really? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember Look, his name right now. one other guy, but I don't talk to him that often, who I did go to, uh, was with in high school. But you're the only one I talk to on a regular basis. <laughs> I don't know anybody that I've known as long as you. I don't know what that means. I'm just saying it. Well, that that's your bad luck. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're coming toward the end of the year. Yeah. And I, um, I, I published a blog post today about uh, resolutions for the new year, which I don't do, mm -hmm. um, but that, you know, given my predicament... <laughs> of cancer and COPD, you know, I feel good, but who knows with these two things, what's going to get way, me by, by, by the way, we've got a bet going on here. I've got uh, I've been taking good odds on this thing, which will get you first, the COPD or the cancer. Ah, right? uh, thanks a lot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying... Well, I mean, either might, but I'm feeling good, so we're not going to think about that right now. Um, I figure I'm going to drop dead before to, that. Given, given my predicament... Yeah. Um, you know, that, that neither, both of which, either of which can take my life away. Uh, instead of resolutions, because I, I was thinking about, I don't think 
resolutions work for when you're this old? Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you've, you've done pretty much. How much self-improvement can I do? I don't really care anymore. Well, I, never, I am what I am. Yeah. But um, I, th- I was thinking that I want to be sure I really, I used to want to live long enough to hear the Mueller report. Now <laughs> I want to, I'll get, I'm, I'm pretty sure unless a car hits me that I'll get through this impeachment thing. But I want to see the election in November because with or without Trump, you know, whether he, whether that some miracle happens and they remove him from office or not, and he continues, that's going to be the most momentous election of our lives, that yours and my long lives. Maybe, and I, I, I hate to say this, but maybe ever in the history of the United States. Because I think well, should, I don't know that we I don't even need to go there. Well, no, but I, what I'm saying is I think more more well, is dependent. We don't. We weren't there, and you and I are not history buffs, so we don't know what went on in old elections way back. Um, and I don't think that's important to make that comparison. Yeah. It's just, you know, for people that are coming up like you and me, you know, if we live long enough, we're coming up on a hundred years. I have two friends in their nineties who are coming up on a hundred years. And certainly in our lifetime, nothing has so, ne- never has so much been riding on an election as this one. Up I, I agree with you on that. Absolutely. And I want to be there. I want to see what happens. After that, everybody younger than I has to deal with it. But, um, but I want to see what happens. Well, if he, re- if he gets reelected, the good news is you'll want to die. <laughs> That's just terrible. <laughs> <laughs> just terrible. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and it's going to be, you know, after even, I guess, after the vote today, um, we're going to see some interesting responses from the president. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, I was mentioning this to somebody on another call today, and it's true that I am watching a, a thing on the universe uh, it it talks about Mars a billion years ago, mm-hmm. four four billion. Yeah, four, a few excuse, things me. In perspective, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I I got it wrong. Four billion years ago. Okay. <laughs> and and so that amounts to us just being this tiny speck in time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Even if we live to be a hundred, we're going to be an insignificant little speck in time. And everybody on this planet right now is just an insignificant speck in time. And I wish Donald Trump realized that. You know, oh. that he that he's not this. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Well, there's no point in going there though, because it won't happen. You know? Yeah. Well, I'm a speck. I don't know how this happened to us. I mean, you there were I think especially if you live in New York. Or anybody who has done that for any, in the last 30, 40 years, understood who Donald Trump was. You know? I mean, he showed up in the tabloids. Um, I don't know, with some new girlfriend now and then. I mean, you know, and on Howard Stern, He's, he showed up on a Howard Stern show a lot. Um, but he was always a, a kind of laughing stock. I mean, yes. It wasn't anybody you took seriously. Yes, right. Right, but America voted for a laughing stock, and what does that say about America? Well, that bothers me a lot that there's that solid forty percent behind Trump that never ever wavers. And how could there forty percent of the population of the United States thinks this is the right kind of president for a country? Well, you know, you had that kind of support. I'll tell you, a part of that support comes from his the fact that he was on TV. Okay. And then but it he, hasn't wavered in you know, three years. But if you Wait. think if you think about Ronald Reagan, a lot of it had to do because he was a movie star. Well, you know, yeah, but at least he could behave in public. You know. Yeah. Uh, it's just, uh, I, I, and he, he, he respected, he respected the people who were, what do we call them, professional. Okay, we mm-hmm. could let her come in. Well, well, uh, she she would. Uh, I've told her when we're talking not to come in. You know. So <laughs> you want me to shout out the door and have her come in? Uh, you know. <laughs> um, I mean, 
he understood that there were professionals in the government business and he worked with them. Yeah. May, you may or may not have liked his politics. Yeah. But he behaved like a grown-up president. Yeah, yeah, he was he was a grown-up. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um and now we don't have a grown-up in the White House. Yeah. And uh Gee, let me ask you a question. How bad does Nixon look now? Oh, that you know. <laughs> Well, you know, my, there was my, somebody on TV this morning. Yeah. Oh, it must have been Chris. What's his last name? That's on MSNBC, the white-haired guy in the evening. Oh, uh, yeah, Chris Matthews. Matthews. Yeah. That's what I couldn't remember. And he said that he had covered all three of the impeachments that we've had in our lifetime. Wow. And I hadn't realized there. I hadn't really thought about it, mm -hmm. but there were three. Yeah. There was Nixon mm -hmm. and Clinton and now Trump. Right. Um, I, and I somehow I, I only thought there were two and that well, Andrew they're Johnson. All, no, they're, all, they're, only, they're, only, they're only two because they never got around to the impeachment hearings or the impeachment proceedings on Nixon because he, he because resigned. He resigned. Yeah. 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 But I hadn't, I just hadn't put much thought to that. Yeah. Any, at any rate, I want to live till November 4 and see, or long enough to see the outcome if it takes a long counting procedure when we get there. I want to know what choice America makes next, next November. Yeah, yeah, uh, that, that would be fascinating. I just don't think, I don't know, I mean, I, uh, my, my wife, who you just saw a few moments ago, uh, she's constantly saying to me, he's going to win. Trump's going to win re-election. I don't think it's out of the question. Oh, I don't think it's out of the question either because I don't think the Democrats have come up with anybody. You know? I mm -hmm. mean, there's, there's no, nobody in the party who engenders the kind of groundswell from people going, I like that guy, you know? I, I think he's great. You know, that's really interesting. I've been saying that for a while. I put it in a little bit different way, but I think we're meaning the same thing, is that there's no one on the Democratic side who inspires me. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, Biden? Nah. Uh, Elizabeth Warren? Yeah, she's smart, but don't care about her. Uh, and and, and uh, Bernie? Bernie, uh, old heart attack Bernie, uh, he with the after the heart attack, nobody wants a president who could keel that over. Doesn't to seem any to be so in the in the polls. Yeah, well, all I'm saying is I don't think I don't think Bernie would make a very good president. I think he's a good senator. I think he's got some good ideas. I don't think he'd be a very good president. You so, know, I will vote for whatever Democrat they put up. <laughs> yeah, I mean they could put they could put up they could <laughs> unless there's somebody they haven't brought they, along they, yet they, that is too objectionable. Any one of them will do for me. They could put up Daffy Duck, and I would vote for him on the Democratic Party. But you know, it's just it's uh, I I just don't know what uh, what uh, you know. Uh, Buttigieg. The one thing about Buttigieg I like is that he is so different from Trump that there is a definite you know there's an age difference. There's a looks difference. He's a good-looking guy. Uh, he's uh, religious. He's uh, he's got. A, if you tick off all the things you would want for a president, Buttigieg kind of fits those. I mean, military three three tours. Uh, went went. Uh, you know, uh, what he graduated from? Um, I think Yale, right? Was it Yale or Harvard? I can't remember. One or the I'm other. Too many Democrats but for top me to of his class. Their I mean, he's got everything over Donald Trump, who was actually just a dumb goofus. That's about it, you know. Um, plus, he 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 side by side with Trump. Trump looks fat and dumpy, and Buttigieg looks well, like he's ready for that, business. I'm not. I'm not interested in their looks, fat or skinny, you know, and. Um, that that doesn't have any bearing on who I would vote for. Uh, not who you would vote for, but I do think that cos I've, we've argued this before that cosmetics are very important because we're dealing in an age of television. Well, that, that, nobody seems to care about him. He got elected. 
We're living in an age of television and and uh, uh, social media and so on, and you need somebody who who looks good in those venues. Just like you know, with Lincoln, you need somebody to look good from the back of a train. Uh, it, 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 the the venues for president, I claim FDR won because his voice sounded great on radio. Could be. Yeah. I don't know. I just don't. I don't think that you're going to have to just live with what I'm Kennedy, about to say. Kennedy. Kennedy. I don't think that yeah. that is a proper way to make a choice. No, so, it's not a so. proper way to make a choice. But the medium of the day tends to dictate what kind of candidate you have to have. Kennedy was our first television president. Can, can we talk about something else? I can't sure. tell you how much this bores me. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, go ahead. Change the subject. Do whatever you want to do. <laughs> no, I just, I don't care about their looks. It's not, <laughs> we're at the brink of oblivion and you're talking about good looks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to know yeah. what you, if you have any resolutions or thoughts or things you want or will do in the new year? Well, I never made resolutions, ever. Uh, and part of the reason was because, obviously, you're going to break them, you know. Uh, and People who don't make them, you're also smug. You know, <laughs> well, making a resolution says that you necessarily did something wrong and you no, want to correct that behavior. No, it says. There's something about... Your life, you would like to be different. Oh, okay. Um, I want to be a Hollywood movie star this year. That's my resolution. I don't know. I don't have any resolution. What you wrote about it at my age, making a resolution is, you know, it can be other things. Like mine is just, I want to see if I can hope to live long enough to see the next election. Okay, let me see what's what's my resolution. For I mean, the if there's year. nothing there, that, that's not a resolution. That's just something you want in the new year. It's something I want in the new year. Oh boy. Um, oh, I don't know. I, d I don't have anything. I really don't. Well, then that's good. You're very happy then. No, I've never been very happy. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually, I, am, am, I, I have been a little more positive lately. And it has a lot to do with my physical condition that's going on. And it, it's made me more... Uh, for instance, I say, why did it, why do I have prostate cancer? And the answer to that is because you're 80 years old. No, it, it's because why don't you have it? Well, well, when you're no, 80, why not you? when you're 80, your chances are very high. You're going to have prostate cancer, whether it's a heavy case or a low case. I've got a medium case. But the point is that I then had the sudden feeling that, well, the reason I've got it is because I'm 80 years old. That's the good news. I'm 80 years old. I could have died at 75 and never had prostate cancer. You know what I'm saying? Are you going to have a cake with 80 candles? No, we don't want to cause a fire. <laughs> You're right. That's a big deal birthday. It, well, it is a big deal birthday. Yeah. I, you know, because I, when I was younger, and I, you know, I always loved thinking about the future and the you know, flying cars and things that we would have. And um, uh, none of those came to pass, by the way. What I didn't don't have and I was hoping for and I was told I was going to have is a household butler, okay? A household what? Butler or maid. Uh, Many who, people have those. Well, they're Roombas and things like that, but we don't have, I thought it was going to be a robot, you know, wearing an apron, you know, like on the, on, on the Jetsons. But anyway, didn't have that. Uh, but uh, I wanted to live long enough to see the future. And I said, you know, 2000's a long way away. I don't know if I'm going to live to be 70. Who knows if I'm going to live to be 70. Isn't that funny? When I was young, I would guess, you know, teens, 20s. Yeah. And I thought about that, that some people live to be that long. I would have been, what was I in? In 2000, I was, I'm 79, I'm 78, 68, 58. Um, I thought that was, I thought I did, I didn't think I necessarily would live that long, even though I knew plenty of people did, but that a lot of people died by that age, which wasn't true. I just thought so. You know? Yeah. But I didn't think, I didn't think I would live to see this. Okay. I, I, I if somebody said to 2020, 
I would go, well, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to make it till then. I hope I do. I hope I can see what the world's like. And by the way, now that I see what the world's like, I'm not that, ex it doesn't make me feel that good. Uh, about you know the climate te change changes everything, doesn't it? Climate, I mean, it, climate it, change. You don't have to ask the questions, but, of course. But also, it the promise of technology uh, is not that good either. When you consider things like uh, uh, identity theft and things like that, all the things that go on, and by the way, all the things that break down. You know, I spend most of my time servicing this network by fixing computers that break down or programs that aren't working anymore. Oh, you know, I've had a con... Yeah. I, I was just complaining to someone on the phone about an hour ago that today when he called, I didn't answer the phone because my cell phone didn't ring. And sometimes it no longer rings, but it, I have no idea which phone... You know, if it doesn't yeah. ring, I don't know I've got a yeah. phone call. And then <clears throat> I had, as I told you, I had to go to this quickie appointment at the medical center and a little thing on my screen popped up um, after I got home to tell me I had an appointment there in an hour. Mm -hmm. I had I had made that happen on purpose. My yeah. reminder pop up. Yeah. But it didn't happen till I got home. <laughs> so all my technology is going to hell. Yeah, well, I had all my technology go to hell while, uh, a couple of days ago. And one of the things that went is I actually put in something here where I could say, uh, uh, Echo, turn on the studio, and it would turn on this light over here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. all that went to hell because, <laughs> the, because Fios decided they were going to change my Wi-Fi setup. And now it won't work because these things only work on like a 2.4 megahertz and it, Please it, don't do the details. It, rec I can't it recommends the five. I mean, it's just that I, I liked it when I had to just go over and turn on the switch. You know, that's it. You know, as I was just discussing with someone, yeah. I don't. I think it was Barry Diller. Yeah. Hello. Wait, I'm trying to turn down something because it was, I was hearing some sound. <laughs> yeah. I think it was Barry Diller many years ago, probably in the mid or late um, 1990s. Uh, he'd been head of big Hollywood studio and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't anymore. And he'd spent a year, he wrote this article, he'd spent a year studying technology, personal computers, because they were brand new then. Not all that many of us had home computers. And because of who he was, he was able to hang out with Bill Gates and yeah. what's the Oracle guy and yeah. Yeah. Steve Jobs and all those people. And he wrote this article about what he discovered. And his conclusion was... This is going to be a wonderful thing for everybody some way, but it won't do us any good until it works as easily as a light switch. Well, and, <laughs> and that's he's true. Right. He's right, and it still doesn't work as easily and as no, a light switch. And, no, and, and then they go around deciding they're going to change something you're using, like they change Skype or whatever, and they go to a worse version. Yeah. They always upgrade it to a worse version. Oh, well, this looks great because somebody... Uh, who's in their technical department is like jerking off at the latest thing that he created for the, for Skype, and it just makes it worse, not better for me and for you. But he doesn't care about him. He's a technological guy. He thinks it's whiz bang. Yeah. You know? Well, I'm waiting for it to be as easy as a light switch. Yeah. Maybe that'll happen in the next year. <laughs> so did you say you had something else you wanted to talk about too, or have you covered all your all your ticked off? Well, all just, your, there's one all thing I just wanted to tell you. Yeah. Um, is that the last evening or this morning, I must have been this morning, I was looking at your show oh. on GabNet. Yeah. And you have the most wonderful New York City opening. Oh, God, do I love that. Uh, yeah, I, I do too. It over and over and over yeah. again. It was just beautiful. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, that's, that's fairly new because I suddenly discovered that I could do it. You know, uh, and, and play it on the show as an opening. And so I use it. It's just you know. wonderful. It just, it made, it almost, it brought tears to my eyes. I wanted to be living back there again. Well, I do that every day. I unfortunately, wish I the rest of the show doesn't live up to the opening. So, you know. Well, I was only, I mean, I got to the end of it and then I backed up and started again and did it several times. It's, mm. it's not only, I mean, it's just wonderful New York Pictures video, but it um, you, you did a beautiful job of putting it together. It's really good. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's all you know footage I buy, 
but it it uh, it looks great. I love. I mean, I love the opening. After that, the show sucks. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's got a. It promises a lot with the opening. You know, you expect some guy to get come out in front of a curtain, go hi everybody, how are you? You know, <laughs> here's Johnny, here's Alex. Yeah, instead you got a guy sitting in front of his his book, his DVDs. You know, but uh, DVDs anyway. are kind of old fashioned now. You know, I know. I I put most of them on my computer and. You've gone through one by one and well, I, I, th off? there used to be a lot more, but uh, I put, I've done about I guess a couple, several, many hundreds of DVDs <laughs> on new files because they preserve better that way and they don't take up as much space, you know. Okay, but, the, but the time involved with the transfer is what I'm thinking. I of. just can't believe I bought all these damn things. Think of all the money I'd have today if I hadn't bought these DVDs. You used to do the same thing with record albums. No, CDs. CDs. Well, yeah, but I got them for free from record companies, you may remember. You know, so what the hell? Anyway, so we're all Takakas. Is that what this is? Is that the sum total of what we just talked about? It's being old is a wonderful thing. I mean, you could be dead. Well, that's not exactly a consolation for being old. Hey, you could be dead. <laughs> I'll tell you, you want to know the bad thing about being old? You could mm -hmm. be young. <laughs> why do you, why are people, it's, it's the normal, um, America is just so screwed up the eight, the whole bunch of life is that up until 40, yeah. you're a wonderful person. And after 40, we just don't pay any attention well, you, to you, you anymore. And it's gotten yeah. younger and younger and younger. And worse, all the people have adopted that attitude of, oh, I'm old, it's terrible. Well, we're running a little bit over here, but I want to ask you a question. Would you want to be a kid growing up today? No. Because what? It, what it, it's got to be a struggle. It's got to you know, be a I real was, struggle. We were, I was discussing this with a few people yesterday of what our lives were like when we were little kids and for little kids now. And one who's got grandchildren who have children, mm -hmm. she said they can't ever let the kids go out to play alone. They always have to go to the park. Yes, with... yes. My, That's my... unsafe it's become. My... Or at least they think it's that unsafe. I don't know which it is. My parents said to me, just be home before dark. Yeah, same thing with me. And I went out and I'm like 10 years old. I'm out wandering around. I used to go to the movie theater, which was a mile away, all by myself, you know. Uh, and uh, we, oh, and by you the know what? We would send us out to play in the good weather. And you could tell it was dinner time. Yeah. It was pretty soon every mother in the yeah. neighborhood was out yelling their kids' names to come home. <laughs> and by the way, nobody, when we were younger, put little plugs on the light sockets, on the electric sockets, so we wouldn't put our finger in there. They allowed us to put our finger in there because once we did it once, we never did it again. I don't think the finger matters. I think the problem was putting something metal in there. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I mean, uh, uh, kids are so overly protected today. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's overly. I mean, I'm not a mother. I don't know, but um, but that. Yes, you are. Children. Yes, you are. Well, <laughs> I did not raise any children, okay. and what um, and what they were talking about is is contemporary mothers now don't feel good about letting their kids right. go out to play alone. They don't do it. I don't know if that's overprotective. Or if that's a real threat, I have no idea. But whatever the result is, the kid, you know, if mom's busy, the kid is stuck in the house. I mean, what's this shit with play dates? When I was a kid, I went over to my friend's house and knocked on the door. Well, what's with play dates? Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, you know, what's interesting? I, I, I wonder. Yeah. In pan before us. Yeah. Um. I wonder if there were as many changes in a lifetime, culturally, socially, every other way too, as there have been in our lifetime. Yeah. I mean, just what we're talking about now mm -hmm. of how kids were treated and whether they could go out and play safely or not um, when we were little compared to now, that's a gigantic change. Gigantic. Yep. That you can't, don't feel safe anyway. I don't know if you can't, but... Don't feel safe allowing your child out of the house alone. 
Well, I'm going to uh, say goodbye to you now. On that note. <laughs> uh, on that note, and wish you a, a happy new year. And a, a happy Kwanzaa, in case you're black. And hey, it's uh, Christmas, too, and there's Hanukkah in there, don't forget. And Yeah, it's all the pressure holidays are on us right now. <laughs> the pressure to give gifts and then the pressure to have fun. You know, uh, and I, I, I hate and that kind of... And you threw your birthday in just for good measure. Uh, well, uh, birth, yeah, yeah, birthday for good measure, which everybody forgets because Christmas is coming up. So, well, you know, yes. anyway. When I, my brother was born on the 21st of December, and my mother always gave him a birthday party in July mm -hmm. because nobody... People would come at Christmas time and said, I couldn't think of two things, so here's one for both, for birthday <laughs> and Christmas. So he felt, she felt he got cheated, so she gave him a birthday party in July. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Ronnie Bennett. Timegoesby.net is her uh, uh, place to go see all her writings and her musings. And, uh, I, Such as they are. and I will do what everybody does this time of the year. I'll see you next year. Oh, is it? Will it be next year? Next time? Yes, it will be. It'll be the first next yeah. time we talk. Yeah, it sure will. Well, happy birthday until then. And a happy New Year and a merry whatever Hanukkah, you know, Hanukkah, whatever, yes. Hanukkah, because you converted to Judaism, which makes you more Jewish than me. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie Bennett. Thanks, Ronnie. Thank you.